Hello, this is Brian Washburn. I like to talk about quadratic air resistance and projectile motion and free fall. Uh, last time we talked about linear air resistance, and this time what I'd like to talk about is quadratic air resistance specifically for projectile motion. Um, so again, for, for projectile motion, what we have is we have an object of mass m, and it has a force of gravity acting on it, mg. But then we also have our air resistive force that's going to be opposite to the direction of the velocity of an object. I'm going to say, say I have some force F here like this. And for quadratic air resistance, we said that the force of air resistance, well in general, the force of air resistance as a reminder, is going to be some function of the speed in the minus V hat direction. For quadratic air resistance, the magnitude of that force is going to be equal to C times V squared. Okay, now the, also as a reminder, the V hat direction is going to be equal to the, it's a unit vector in the direction of velocity. If we use a Cartesian coordinate system, we can say that this is going to be equal to Vx x hat plus Vy y hat divided by the magnitude of the vector, which is just this. Okay, so now let's take a look at quadratic air resistance. Look at the equations of motion. Again, what we're going to do is we're going to solve for, so this is F equals ma, uh, mass times acceleration, and but instead of acceleration, we're going to call that V dot, is going to be equal to uh, what do we have? We have the weight acting downward, and then we're going to put minus the uh, the force <clears throat> due to quadratic air resistance, which is v squared in the v hat direction. Okay, so that's a vector equation. Again, what we want to do is express that in terms of x and y components. Um, this is a little bit more complicated than what we have for linear resistance. Uh, for example, this term here, if you take a look at this term here, we can rewrite this as, well, V squared is going to be VX squared plus VY squared. And then V hat is going to be equal to, well, this is what we have here, VX X hat plus VY Y hat divided by this magnitude here. We can simplify that by saying that's going to be equal to, well, the denom this is basically twice uh, uh, the square of the denominator. And so we can write this as Vx squared Vy squared, okay, quantity Vx x hat plus vy, sorry, vy y hat. Okay, so that's what we're going to do here. Sorry, did make a mistake again. Okay, okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this vector equation and write it in x component and y component like we did before. We have m v x dot is going to be equal to, well there's no component of g along the x direction, and we're going to get here minus c times the x component of this, so that's just going to be c v x Oh, sorry, I made a mistake. Yeah, so then this is a square. So actually what I should do, um, the term. So basically I have this quantity divided by that quantity, but that's equal to this quantity there. Okay, so that's correct. So now I'm going to get so the x component is basically this thing here times vx here. So I can write that simply as vx times the square root vx squared plus vy squared. Okay, that's in the x direction. And then in the y direction, I have m 
vy dot is going to be equal to well minus mg and then here I get cvy times vx squared plus vy squared square root okay now what I'm going to do to simplify things I'm going to divide by m okay and if I divide by m I get the equations of motion I get here um, c divided by m minus and I'm just going to write it to switch the order of these guys here vx okay and then here I get vy dot it's going to be equal to well here you have minus g minus c over m I'm going to have here vx squared vy squared vy okay so oops sorry about that <laughs> those are my equations of motion that I want to solve all right um, so this is complicated and uh, so what I want to do is I want to identify those differential equations okay so if you take a look at those differential equations that I have there notice that they're first of all they're first order the first order ordinary differential equations okay um, however what makes them very how and the other thing giving acronyms to these guys um, they're coupled The reason why they're coupled is because if you take a look at this equation, I have vx and vy. So I have vx, and then this equation I have vy and vx. So they're coupled, all right? That makes that hard to solve. But the worst thing, <laughs> the worst thing is that they're nonlinear. Nonlinear because I got the square root, okay? So those equations cannot be solved using analytic methods you have to use a computer to solve them now you can maybe simplify things uh, for example just for free fall if I just drop it on um, one even one dimension if I just drop it then what happens is V X dot is equal to zero that means V X is V X itself is zero and so then I can get something I can solve that um, but in general, the free fall, uh, projectile motion cannot be solved. However, can we get any physics whatsoever out of this? And we can, if we take a look at this idea of what I'm going to talk about, uh, terminal speed. Okay, what, what do I mean by terminal speed? Well, we, I think we talked about this before, but if I have an object, and say I just drop it, obviously there's two forces acting on it I have the weight of the object and then I have the quadratic air resistance going up if they're equal to each other the thing is in static it's in equilibrium which means it doesn't accelerate so that means that in static in, in equilibrium that means that m v dot is equal to zero which implies that f and minus mg as, uh, is, as vectors is equal to zero as well, okay? So that means we can take the equations we had before, specifically what we want to do is take a look at this equation here and set it equal to zero. Um, this equation here, there's no gravity going on and the, obviously this is only in the y direction. But if we take a look at this equation here and set it equal to zero, what we're going to get is we're going to get, so let's just write out the equation we had here was the uh, y dot is going to be equal to, just looking at it here, minus g, let's just write it out, so minus g minus c over m, uh, vx squared vy squared square root vy okay we set this equal to zero in stack the stack equilibrium case 
we're gonna get this. Now v x is equal to zero um, <clears throat> because we're gonna we're gonna say that v x in this case v x is zero because we're not giving it any at all any component of velocity in that direction. We're just dropping it. Okay, so then I'm gonna get here v y uh, squared square root v y. Uh, this is going to give me g is going to be equal to c over m v y squared. But this y is not a special y. We're going to call that, we're, instead of calling it v y, we're going to give it a different name. We're going to call that the terminal speed. So we're going to have here basically v term. And so we can say v term is going to be equal to mg divided by c square root. Okay, so that's going to be a terminal speed. So even though we can't solve the equations uh, simply, we can see that I expect to see a terminal speed. So if I drop an object, it's going to speed up and eventually asymptotically hit um, a speed given by the terminal speed. So if I were to plot, even even though if I take a look at this this equation here, yeah, I can't solve that unless I have a computer and we'll do this in a, in a little bit. But I can't solve that. But if I do solve it with a computer, I at least can compare it to the terminal speed. So what I expect to happen if I plot here, say time and V, and say I take the uh, or say I take the object and just drop it. Okay. Uh, it's going to start from zero, and eventually it's going to hit a terminal speed where this guy here is the v term, given by the expression that I have right here. So that's a good way to check our solutions. Okay. So again, just to kind of summarize, what we did was we looked at we looked at quadratic air resistance, and what we have is we have gravity acting on the object and quadratic air resistance. This gives me, if I write in terms of the velocities or the components of velocities, I get a first order differential, ordinary differential equation, however it's coupled and nonlinear. So I can't solve the gen, a generic projectile motion equation using a piece, I have to use a computer to do that. However, even if I use a computer to do that, I can actually predict what the terminal speed should be and then if I solve it using a computer, I better see that, that my solution will hit a terminal speed. And we'll do this using Python and actually show that's the case. Okay. Okay, so that's it. We'll talk to you later.